Ruth 1.10. Let's take note of this, and uh, I think I'm probably going to prophesy a bit more. Ruth 1.10, are you there? Then she kissed him goodbye and wept aloud and said to her, this is where 10 starts, and said to her, we will go back with you to your people. But Naomi said, return home, my daughters. Why would you come with me? Am I going to have any more sons who could become your husbands? Return home, my daughters. I am too old to have another husband. Even if I thought there was still hope for me, even if I had a husband tonight and gave birth to sons, would you wait until they grew? Would you remain unmarried for them? No, my daughters. It is more bitter for me than for you because the Lord's hand has turned against me. At this they wept aloud again. Then Orpah kissed her mother-in-law goodbye, but Ruth clung to her. Look, said Naomi, your sister-in-law is going back to her people and her gods. Pinch your neighbor and say, I'm going anywhere but back. No, you didn't say that for real. Will you pinch your neighbor and say, I'm going anywhere but back. You're not saying that like you're for real. I want you to act like you're focused. Pinch them and tell them, I'm going anywhere but back. Now scream this, say, in the name of Jesus. Scream it, say, in the name of Jesus. I call you out of reverse. Your sister-in-law is going back to her people and her gods. Go back with her. But Ruth replied, here's our message. Don't urge me to leave you or to turn back from you. Where you go, I'm going. Where you stay, I'll stay. Your people will be my people. You're uncomfortable and it shows. Your God will be my God. Where you die, I'll die. And there I will be buried. May the Lord deal with me, be it ever so severely, if even death separates you from me. And when Naomi realized that Ruth was determined to go with her, she stopped urging her. Father, in the name of Jesus, give me a couple minutes to share this. Amen. I want you to humbly, soberly, contritely look at your neighbor and just say this. Say, neighbor, let's do it together. I'm trying. They're guarded, and they don't like what I'm about to do. They're nervous. So, so they're trying to make res reservations at Red Lobster and all of that. I understand. Look at the other person and say, I really, really, really do want to do it together. The gospel as we know it is veiled. We have a veiled gospel. You liked this start, didn't you? The gospel is veiled, and it's veiled under layers of history and experience. But the reason God gives us a veiled gospel is because he is an invisible God. Scream preach. And an invisible God cannot have a gospel that's easy to comprehend. And so the way he concludes the gospel is in the bodily form of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the conclusion of the gospel. There is, in fact, nothing more to say when you've seen Jesus. There is nothing more to understand once you've saw Jesus. If you've seen him heal, you've seen the gospel. If you've seen him cast the devil out, you've seen the gospel. Jesus Christ, hallelujah, is the gospel incarnate. Say, I hear you. The gospel is veiled, and, and the, way, the, the, the way it explains, I'm going to be simple until I can't no more. The way we explain this is, is the way in the apostolicity of, of the apostle Paul when he says, if our gospel be hid, it is a veiled gospel. It takes time to uh, uh, discover and time to investigate and time to believe. Ask me why. Because iniquity will make you think that all news is bad. Be seated, Ricky. I'm not there. That all news is bad. Iniquity got you having a way of looking at circumstance. I'm there. And looking at situation and looking at life and looking at genetic and looking at history and looking at truth. And so when the good news arrives, the bad news tries to get louder. That's what happened when Jesus came upon the scene. He was the good news in the middle of the bad news. But I just want 10 of you that's grateful for the good news. Just oblige me real quick. Lift your hands and scream hallelujah. Just, just say that. Okay. That's enough. That's enough. The good news. He is the gospel, the good news. 
He is the point of God. He is the good news of God. And he is so veiled that it took the entirety of the scriptures to unveil that that was cloaked in culture and cloaked in history and cloaked in, in archaeology and cloaked in and physiologically, cloaked in all of the layers and centuries of, of, of lies and, and stories and wreckage and ruin. And here comes the gospel navigating its way through all of that to appear itself to us. And so we give consideration to difficult books like the book of Ruth. Books book like the book of Ruth or the book of Jude or other really small books in the Bible that when trying to explore or investigate God, we get trapped in because they seem so simple. Mm, but nobody told me that when I open the book of Ruth, I'm not just going to find a Sunday school message. It's good to me. I'm not going to find a, a singles message. I'm not going to find what y'all made it, which is wedding vows. I'm going to find what happens when a journey meets a journey. Now here's where I'm going to start preaching right now because everybody wants to talk about levels. Everybody wants to talk about seasons. Everybody wants to talk about dimensions. Nobody wants to talk about the journey. Please sit down because in order to get from level to level, you've got to journey from season to season. You've got to journey from dimension to dimension. You've got to journey from city to city. You've got to journey and we love the arrival and we love the destination we don't like when we've got to grab hands with the God of the journey I will journeys I ain't got patience mommy I'm not a patient man it belongs in my office but I ain't sat down all the way <laughs> I'm not real patient like I'm supposed to be. Paul was patient until the formation of Christ in people. So impatient people have to work on their attitude towards a journey. Don't rush me. I'm getting there. Impatient people have to be proved to that they are impatient. Because in their mind, they think that they are settled and focused and they are not weary and they are not tired. But everybody else around them are seeing the signals. They're seeing the symptoms and the sign of irritation. Preach Negro and weariness and want and worry and all of that. And you've got Christianity in your mouth. You got the Bible on your wall and in your text messages and you're posting that, but something in you is growing weary. I'd like to know what you're doing with your weariness. I'll get to verse 10 when I'm ready. I want, I, I, I want to know what you're doing when your solution, watch me, is get away from me, everybody, and, and let me get away from y'all. It's best that we just all be mutual. Yeah, I know, because there's a chill in here and it shouldn't be. L let me just go ahead and fall into the weapon. I'm going to preach harder because you ain't saying, man, of alienation and isolation. As a matter of fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to coexist with all of you and shut down to the extent that you don't even know what's wrong with me. And I'm going to pursue my journey by myself. But here is where you need to appreciate the texture of my text. There is no such thing as a real journey alone. If you're journeying along it makes you a vagabond if you're journeying along it makes you a gypsy you're going from place to place living in hotels and motels when there is a house that has your heritage and your name and your future on there I just want you to find who you're supposed to do it with Ruth why you ain't tell me you had more to say than getting up and, and, and getting vows at a wedding, Maurice? Because we cheapened it, mommy. We got to the altar and we exchanged wedding vows and we, we did this. But we didn't figure out that this was not just uh, the exchange of uh, people because they were in quote unquote love. This was a commitment to do it together. There was, this is a commitment to a journey. And, and, and here's what, what, what brings me to the pivot or the, or the introduction of this in verse 10. Brian, you'll need to understand this. Sometimes pain understands pain. 
And, 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 and you won't say amen right now because we are in the business of hiding the pain, of making sure that nobody sees the pain and conceptualize the pain. And Dr. Ken, pain can come from different places. I don't like the doctor. I, I, I'm, I'm a macho man up until I'm in the doctor. I don't like it. I, don't, I can't stand it. And one of the things that the triage nurse always asks me, Elder Ed, is, is it a stabbing pain or a numbing pain? All pain ain't the same. Preach Negro. Some pain is a last and some pain is fatal. Glory. There, there, there are some wounds that, that are fatal or lethal and there are other pains that just are there to, to aggravate you. Now I don't know about you and maybe I'm being dramatic. I have a tendency to be. But there were some days when I preferred a bullet over a paper cut. <laughs> because sometimes a paper coat really, really, really annoyed me. And I'm like, I can toughen out this bullet, but I can't hate this small thing. In the name of Jesus, before I pull you into the rest of this text, this week, you will not suffer at the laceration of a small thing. You will not cry at the cut of a small thing. You will not lose sleep over a small thing. Lift your hands and say, I receive. Let's do it together. Pain knows pain. And so, so this situation is unusual because you have a situation where life has situated it, uh, circumstance has afforded it, where you've got three individuals and a common pain. Three individuals and a common journey. You don't have to say, man, I brought it with me. Three individuals and a common disappointment. Three individuals and a common loss, an experience that is there. Now, here is where the church gets it wrong. I'll preach if you don't mind. We get it wrong with trying to convince people out of their experience. Allow me the time now. And, and, and I can believe what I want, preach Negro, and I can have dogma and be indoctrinated and believe the principles of the scripture, but it does not give me the right to deny you of what you experience. What you experience is in your wheelhouse and in your word book. I can't tell you what hurt you. I can't tell you what you had and what you didn't. I can't tell you the type of mama you had and the type of daddy you had. Now here is where we all lose the battle. You want to know a secret, Rav? Everybody loves to tell our story for us. It'd be funny to the mom because they tell you what you went through and what you didn't and how they saw you suffer and how they didn't and then your cousins tell you and your auntie tell you but then all of a sudden you got a roof a roof mm. a Naomi and a Orpa move that R it is not Oprah it's Orpa and you got an unfortunate circumstance that brings us together a pain that situates us in need a pain that reminds us of what we need to survive lift your hands and scream the journey now there's a woman who's capable of pouring. Lord have mercy. Tried to prophesy to y'all earlier, but you wouldn't give me my jet or my plane. So I took it back. It's not going to happen today. But I'm telling you the givers are getting ready to come. Listen to me. God promised me, Crystal, that this was going to be the season where those that refreshed would be refreshed. And he was positioning the givers around those that have been giving. If you have been in your life for the last 90 days said, I'm tired of giving, depleted of giving. I ain't got nothing else to give. I'm prophesying you into a season of giving beyond you've ever seen before. You know why? Because you give because you have. And you have because you give. Therefore, you will never be without. The givers are coming. How do I handle grief? Giving. Watch me. The, the, the Ruth and Naomi story, Dom, is about those that were willing to give beyond convenience. Preach Negro. Give beyond record and give beyond will and give beyond logic. I, I am a giver. You're quiet right now at 7359 because you, like me, are mad that God called you to be a giver. You don't like the fact that when it seems like you're at your lowest, here comes a moment of sacrifice. I'll preach if I want to. And you've got to give again. You feel like you just got done getting resolve about that. You just moved on from this. You just forgave her. 
you just walked away from here and all of a sudden I ain't scared of you all of a sudden there is this inward pressure Ruth there is this inward pressure Naomi because of the journey will you tap three people real quick say because of the journey because of the journey uh, obey me I'll preach harder you don't scare me touch three people and say because of the journey because of the journey the journey mandated it and the journey is demanding this I'm going somewhere I've got a destination. God is leading me somewhere. Wisdom is calling me somewhere. My grief brought me here. But my partnerships are taking me there. My grief was enough to get me to sustain in this moment and in this place. But God's going to send something, a sign to my season to make sure that I don't mismanage what happened to me. Now, I don't want you to shout because I have a lot of time. And I've got to prove to y'all that I'm intelligent because you doubt it. But will you just slap somebody real quick and say, neighbor. Yeah. What? Say, neighbor. Yeah. Don't waste your crisis. If you're going to go through it, you may as well let God use it. If it's going to hurt you, you may as well let it heal them. If it's going to disappoint you, you may as well make it a weapon of deliverance. Do not waste your crisis. If you had to lose it, make the thing lift you. If you got defeated by it, make it prove that you are a deliverer. I'm not wasting my pain or my peril or my problems. It's all going to work out. Be seated. Caveat is we got to do it together. Be seated. Your father's back. Loneliness is a powerful instrument. I'm in my text. And it can either lead you to a lie or a or a kind of a love you've not known. Loneliness. It's something that the popular have to live with. Come on, let's have a time. I, I know you think that you're the only one that deals with it. But the person next to you has gotten really good at masquerading in their loneliness. They don't think, I really feel like preaching today. They don't think you understand it. So they give you the version of them that you can handle. Loneliness. They, they, they are functional. They are able to put on and they know what to do and how to be so that you don't wonder about their disappointment, grandbaby, and their elongated anger against God and, and where you at and, and are you listening and I feel defeated and I'm tired of your loneliness. But two, there are two destinations. You either end up in the lie, preach, Negro, or you end up in a brand new love. You either end up in a lie or a new love. <sighs> May God send people to love the hell out of you. I'm going viral. Hey, TikTok. May God send people that's going to love the iniquity out of you. Love the worry out of you. Ah! Love the grief out of you. Love the doubt out of you. Love the insecurity. Ah! Love the insecurity out of you, the inferiority out of you. When a man is loved well, he lives well. Naomi, come on, let's go. Naomi. We hear that, honey. I like that. Naomi. Naomi. Y'all didn't push me to the point of preaching. Naomi, ah! the chief is here, Naomi, Naomi, you've been crying, Ruth, hey Ruth, you've been crying, but the difference is, is crying alone has different implications. When you find somebody else you can cry with. Now, I know you're trying to figure out where I'm going with this. I'm talking to you about sanctuary. Say well, say really? But sanctuary is not the room, it's the relationship. It's also the opportunity. I think you have sanctuary connections. You have, you have friendships that bring Emmanuel. You are a reminder to me that God is with me. When I hug you, I am reminded that he is my healer. Yes, he did it, but he did it through you. I wish I had somebody in here that understood the purpose. 
Be seated. Come here, Ruth. Come here, Ruth. You crying. I'm crying. You're crying. I'm crying. You're crying. And I'm crying. But the real truth is we're crying. And the real truth is we've been crying aside from each other. Apart from each other. And we don't understand why the crying won't stop. I'm in my text. So the crying only stops when we find the right people to cry with. Rewatch it. You're going to keep crying as long as you cry alone. But you got to cry with whoever is closest to you. I feel like preaching. You got to grab somebody and cry with them. I'm mad at God, but I love him. I'm mad at this season, but I will obey. I don't break up well, and so I'm grieving. Let me be honest. Lord Jesus in the morning. I was cussing at the Lord, mommy, the other day. He's this, uh, we're friends. I was praying. And uh, I was yelling at him. I was t- I'm cursed. I'm in my text. I'm, 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 I promise you. It'll make sense in a minute. I'm in my text like Naomi and Ruth. And I'm like, I have no sons. I said that bull stuff. Where are they? I'm crying, weeping bitterly. The Holy Ghost, this message is going to give us breakthrough. The Holy Ghost said to me, Enough. That's all he said. Enough. I said, huh? I want to run out of my prayer room like Maury. Like when they find out it's not the father. I want to be dramatic. He said, enough. I said, Lord, what do you mean? He said, if I had to send my son, why can't you send yours? Just because they were sent don't mean they ain't yours. I need you to focus and let me build my house. Let's do it together. A sent son is still a son. Be seated. I'm working in here. I'm saved because of a sent son. Delivered because of a sent son. Whole because of a son that could not stay. I know. He sent his son. Be seated. Y'all making me happy. And so we have... Point, point number one, make sure, write this down, we're in our text, verse 10, I'm about to teach you, they gave me too much time. Make sure your crying does not ruin your conversations. Please write this down. Look at your neighbor and say, let's do it together. Open your mouth and say, let's do it together. Make sure your crying does not ruin your communication. My daughter, my eldest daughter, I proudly am looking for AARP um, things now. My daughter, Pastor ATN, has a driver's license. Nobody's praying. <laughs> we about to go on seven days of prayer. I'm serious. In Chicago, because of his driver's license. And, and because of how I raised her, she's not coming out the door asking for a Kia Sophia or a, or a Chevrolet. She's like, do you still talk to Mercedes? <laughs> Ma'am, you can't vote. <laughs> oh, it's a God. She went out of town to, to do a national debate com- competition. She inherited the mantle on my life for oratory and polemic speaking and direct address. It's on my daughter. She got it. And I was expressing to her about why it's important to study your speech even if you don't have to look at it. And she told me, she said, I'm a good speaker, but I'm a bad communicator. And I said, what in the Matthew Stevenson? Because we think the person with the mic understands what they mean. And we think that the person with the attention is always clear about what they feel. We think that the person under the pressure is always clear and, and, and distinct, and that's not always true. Now, here is what I know about grief. Crystal's a therapist, not me. Ask her. Grief confuses you. There is a measure of ambiguity and discombobulation and uncertainty because grief is a disruption of certainty. 
Lord, I wish I had a real church. When grief comes and death comes and love come, loss comes, your certainties are challenged. So everything that makes you feel secure and feels wanted and feels seen and feels loved and feels valued, there is an earthquake in the emotions. So if Naomi don't find Ruth, if Ruth don't find Naomi, if there's nothing in the sanctuary, because look, 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 look. look at your neighbor in the eyeball real quick. I feel like preaching. You can't tell me this ain't woman out loose. <laughs> <laughs> Say, neighbor, you're not sitting next to me. You're sitting next to my journey. Turn to somebody else. Say, you're looking at a journey. Now, when you meet me at chapter one, don't judge me. And when you have to walk with me through chapter two, don't let go of me. And when you're frustrated me and frustrated with me in chapter three, don't get hateful at me and get irritable at me. This is just my journey. And I'm looking for anointed hands. Preach Negro. Anointed hearts. Anointed vessels. That's a sign to my next. Now, I understand that there was a lot of people that was there for me then but those that were there for me then can't help me go there I need to know who I can do it together with Naomi was crying Ruth was crying and they did the right things with their tears they, they, they didn't let their tears bring them into rebellion I'm talking to you they didn't let their tears bring them into isolation <laughs> They didn't let their tears bring them into some form of revenge against God. They allowed their tears to connect them. I've got a pain that you've got. I got a story that you've got. You, this is the real Me Too movement. The real Me Too movement is when the church grows up to the extent where we're not afraid to share our scars. That happened to you. It happened to me. They said that about you. I really do know that I am. But you know, where in the world? And, 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 and everybody's binding and loosing elders. Stephen and cutting the devil and Jezebel and no, 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 no. how you an intercessor with no empathy how don't you understand how to put yourself at my seat and see what you would feel if you had my journey and had my you can't intercede for me if you're not even trying to understand what it is to be me you so busy being mad at me that's why I want you praying for me I want to know if we can do it <laughs> Naomi is crying Ruth is crying. Similar reasons, different stories. Be seated. You're devouring my time. When I think about the way the gospel is veiled, I see the church and the story of Naomi and Ruth. I see a kinsman redeemer dying. I see a woman opening up her home, the church, to take in those that wouldn't have one, the Gentile. And coming into revelation of the good news. But here, here, here. Yeah, you're getting later. The mystery there is this. Jesus is showing us exactly what happens when people are willing, watch me, to hurt together. What is the church? Thank you for the anointing. What is the church if we can't hurt together? I don't, I, I gave up, Kenza. On the mountaintop, friends. I gave up on the mountaintop selfies. I gave up on the mountaintop pictures. I need some people for the valley. Come on, Ruth. Let's talk. It's the valley. Come on. Come on. Open up. Open up now. It's the valley. See, it's the valley relationships. I'm destined for the top, but right now, I'm not there. I was born for the top, but right there, right now, I'm fighting. I'm in the dark night of the soul. And you want me to hurry up and get to Sunday so I can make sure that I benefit you. But right now, I'm in my Saturday. And I need somebody that's going to go through hell with me. Fight with me. Woe unto you that keep people close who run when you fight. Let's do it together. 
I see the mystery of the gospel. Be seated in this story. The mystery of the gospel is Ruth and Naomi serve us as a shadow and a type. Give me credit when you do teach it. And it's a shadow and a type of how the unwelcome gets welcomed. But they get welcomed on one condition. Say what? Honesty about the wound. Nala, help me preach later because they're not listening. But honesty about the wound. Because think about what dishonesty about the wound does. What dishonesty about the wound does is project you as someone that you're really not. And then we love the portrayed you. We get to know the theatrical you. And we can't walk healed. And we can't walk whole. But you lost something. I lost something. We all lost something. And now we're here. Verse 10 says, Naomi, like Elijah, like Jesus, like any great architect of the human experience, go back. You don't have it in you to follow. Go back. It's easier. It's comfortable. Go back. You don't have what it takes to, to, to develop the skills that I have. I lost my stuff a long time ago. You just lost. And now you're watching me lead while losing. And now you're learning how to lose because I'm your leader. Just, just, just go back. I want to find out if it's easier for you to go back into convenience. And go back into rhythm, preach Negro. And go back into pace. And go back into sync. Just go back and, 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 and grab a hold of your normal. And grab a hold of your regular. And grab a hold of your routine. And grab a hold of your rhythm. And grab a hold of your pattern. Go back. Now I know why you're quiet right now. Because I'm preaching to 75 people in the room that's being delivered from self-sabotage. You know darn well you don't want them people to leave your life. And you know you don't mean what... What you say when you say you want to just go ahead and kill everybody and walk away and be left alone in a closet and left alone. You know you didn't mean that. God sent me to 7359 to deliver a people from the power of self-sabotage. Grow up so we can do it together. You don't have to prove that every love lies. Let's do it together. You don't have to push off every hug as if it's lying. Categorize it. Define it. Behave within the parameters but whatever you do let's do it together I know what it is to walk that out I know what it is to win this and the sanctuary is a place where agreement should work and agreement is not just prayer it's let's do it together In verse 10 we see a sabotage attempt have you ever met somebody that didn't think they deserved the love open your heart that didn't think that they could ever have a real friend. Open your heart. That didn't think that anybody would ever understand for real. If you're like me, you might be one of those people that think that maybe you're the one that's too much. <laughs> that maybe if I give you my full self, I'll overwhelm you. Talk back to me. If, if I'll admit and if I'll honest the deepest places of where I am. I've been with God. You should have left me alone. The deepest places of where I am and, 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 and what I'm afraid of and what I'm exploring. Watch me. I'm even afraid to give you my real questions. When I wake up on Sunday mornings, I have to go in my bathroom and put on my costume. And I have to get ready and put on my all-nation self. Because if I put on my hurt self and my wounded self and my weary self and my afraid self and my separated self and my anger angry self and my lonely self and my revengeful self if I put on the truths of my nine to five and put on the truths of what it takes for me to get through the holiday and put on the truths of what it means for me to manage the family map and the story if I have to do all of that to get you to upset me then I'm going to be that version of me because I feel accepted then but there's a real truth and there's a real issue and there's a real reality so what I'll try to do watch me is beat you to the point. I'll try to hurt you before you hurt me. I'll destroy this. I'm working in here to prove that it was never possible. I'll make sure that there was an abrupt ending to this because I'm not used to doing it together. Naomi, come here. Ruth. Ruth, Naomi. 
Can I preach? They gave me way too much time. I'm out your head. Orpa. Come on, Elder Kim. Where you go. In life, sometimes God gives you cohorts. I wish I had the time. Life support. You will struggle through this with them. You will learn this and I will assign them to that. Open your heart and I'll let you go. I'll give you a quadrant, a squad, a network, a unit, a tribe. That even if they don't understand you, they'll at least ask you questions to get there. When you meet them, do you try to hurt them before they hurt you? Understood. Hey, Brandon, you're going to lie. <laughs> Slap your neighbor real quick. This is, I know. I'm going to give you permission. God will forgive you. We're under grace. I know you don't mean this. I know you don't mean this. I know you don't. I know you don't. But look at them at least in practice and say, neighbor, let me in. Y'all hear that? Yeah. Do it again, because y'all failed that one. <laughs> Elder Pittman, that's my, he, he, he looked like he want to pull out his gun on me. My mother's over there sweating. Dr. Braylock got that mask on. Nobody wants to say this for real. Look at somebody and just scream for real and say, will you please let me in? They cried together and wept aloud. And Naomi urged him to go back. Will you just hear the word of the Lord? God is sending disruptive relationships to you. Relationships that will interrupt your normal. He is summonsing people. Mm. With every kind of testimony, and every kind of story, and every kind of background to your current moment, you got to know how to receive. Because they're not coming in the place of your wholeness. They will arrive at the point of pain. Naomi. She says, go ahead and leave. Do what they all do. Move on. Abandon the journey. Mm -hmm. abort the journey stop here because even if I could fix it watch me and give you husbands tonight are you going to wait because what makes people more weary Pastor Trout than waiting and I'm talking to a hundred people that's in a place called indefinite <laughs> No deadline, no answer, don't know when God's going to change it. Preach, Negro. When God's going to stop it and doing it, he's just saying wait and that's it. I want to hear the praise of somebody who has that as their last instruction. I don't know what else he's doing, but the last thing I heard. Oh, Lord. I needed it in a minute. The last thing I heard was wait. The last instruction I heard was wait. I don't know what else to do and I'm waiting now, but I'm waiting here. Until I know what to do. Go home. Go home. Go back to Norm. Orpah was like, got it. <laughs> Deuces. Mm. May God deliver you from the Orpahs in your life. I know y'all don't like it. I'm here. The Orpahs. The Orpahs that are there and that, and that just decide to dismiss themselves from the inconvenience of you. The challenge of you, preach Negro. The complexity of you. You're just way too much. No, I'm too much for you. Bye, bye. 
Orpah leaves, and now there's somebody struggling alone, and now you have this dynamic. Now I'm giving you a warning. You're going to start your journey in freedom with support, and then at some point the support may die off. And can you still focus when who you started with stops? Nobody's saying amen. I'll borrow one from back there. So, so God will start you in a season, in a group for faith, for wisdom, for focus. And then you'll start on the journey and the journey gets hard. And the journey starts eliminating. And the journey starts adding. And the journey starts paying attention to. And here y'all are. And, and this is what Naomi Ruth said. Look at your sister. Now you're like, oh, that's so good, but I don't do that. You scroll at your sister. Tweet at your sister. You're looking and reviewing and researching what you resent. The one that left while you're still staying in order to find and contend your own healing or for your own healing and your own restoration. And it looks like they're going further than you. And the Bible says your sister went back and returned to her land and her gods. Your neighbor's sleeping, wants some caffeine. I'm boring them. Will you just give them a, a prophetic warning and say, whatever you do, don't go back to what wants you. She went back to her neighbor and their gods. You want me to turn my plow? I feel the wall, but I'm about to. Yeah. The gods of your past are calling you. Yeah, the gods of your past, the sources behind your destruction and your confusion, the sources that had you indecisive, they're calling you. They're waiting on you to come back. They got the place prepared, but I dare you to do it together. When you do it together, you're reminded it makes no sense to go back there. Ask me how. Ask me how. Ruth said, don't tell me to leave you. Because I'm out of my mind and you ain't. And God's going to send people around you where you can take turns. I'm going to preach myself silly in a minute. And today you said, give me a chance tomorrow. Don't tell me to leave you. Because God linked us together in an unfortunate circumstance. And we're here now and we're joined by the pain. We're both abandoning the convenience of what it takes to be you and me. It started off with one, but by the process of the journey, one has now left. And now I got to learn how to survive in me and be me and win in me and obey God for me and protect me I want to challenge you real quick and I'm not a self help speaker I don't even like poetry that much but will you help me snap somebody real quick and say I think I like me will you just say that real quick oh you scared to say it you scared to say it you scared to say tell your neighbor I think I like me. Mm. Mm -hmm. It's a landing in here now. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. And sometimes God will cause a Ruth and a Naomi to get together to teach you why you need to love you better, how to take care of you better. How to talk to yourself better. How to hold your own hand. How to look at the mirror and not despise what you see. He said, Naomi the roof, and then here is the pact that they made. And I know why y'all nervous. You truce breakers. Allow me to remain in my office. It is apostolic criminality. It is an offense to the New Testament culture and pattern for people to routinely break truces. We dishonor the power of the vow. It's not just in marriage. The power of the vow. We don't keep our foot when we go into the house of the Lord anymore. And, and we don't keep our foot when we go into the house of the Lord because of the people of the Lord. But there is something there. We've got to start to revere if God is going to cause us to come in rooms where we can do it together. Tell me not to leave you. 16, we're there. Where you go, I'll go. In other words, while I'm on my journey, I'm going to watch you walk it out. Where you go, I'll go. I'll do it like that. 
And then where you stay, I'll stay. Tuka, can I give you a word? One of the greatest things in the world. Oh, I wish. Yeah, no, I got to hurry up because this could turn into a praise moment. I think what God is going to give for you, I have a prophecy, Noel, about the month of March. God has given me a very specific prophetic word. But one of the things I believe that God is going to do for all y'all in the room that have faith, he's going to give you the gift of contentment. Listen, it won't be ideal. It won't look like you want, but you are getting ready to be satisfied. <laughs> I'm on my way there. But I ain't there no more. I'm trying to get out of here. But I just got out of there. Contentment. Now, if you can ever find contentment, you'll find your own clarity. Don't let me go. Your people will be my people. Your God will be my God. I, I, I want to know that I, I called one of my sons this morning. I was in deep travail. And I called him. I said, hey, headed out. He said, okay, you're getting dressed. Give me your ETA. I said, in a minute. Got quiet. You know what came out of me next? Desa. Lembronai. Kevin Ahatala Dishia Tora Kotara Nai. Kene Dada Daba. He said, push pop. I said, Beronai. Didika Sakorin Dininise Hatala Borana. Oh, yeah, the spirit of a man will sustain him. I think what God is trying to get you to do is open up your life to relationship zones and conversations and atmospheres and environments where life can flow out of you and to you, through you and for you. But you can't be afraid to find somebody to do it together. Why did y'all make these? wedding vows line because y'all married a lot of people whose gods weren't your gods why'd you make this a marriage vow y'all were with a lot of people whose people weren't your people y'all married a lot of people who death would have been an easy reason for you to move on for this was not about romance it was about life Nobody gets out alone. Nobody lives alone. They go so far in this covenant. Say, let's do it together. Say, let's do it together. Now, this is probably uh, a human extreme, but a part of what they confess to one another is, on the day you die, tell the Ubers in heaven to come get me next. <laughs> Because the way I live, I've learned to live life in this arena of healing and environment. I've sanctuaried here. I don't have to look over my shoulder. I don't have to worry about the husbands that are dead. I don't have to worry about how hard the journey is going to be. Let's do it together. You're not impressed with my homiletic skill. I understand. But what I'm extending to you, if you will indulge, is... God is sending you two by twos. Let me ask you a question. I'll show you a mystery. Dr. Candace will teach on, on it later and give me my credit. Noah's Ark stunk. There was not a pleasant scent on that boat. There's no way you can have every species of anything on there without a bathroom. And it be comfortable. Even in a flood, it stunk. Even with trying to survive, it was not okay conditions. Wherever there is two by two, something's going to stink. Let's do it together. You have a calling that you have to walk in. Let's do it together. Now, when you have to fly solo, you have to be clear with who your support is supposed to be. Come here, Naomi. You cry. Come here, Ruth. You cry. Let's come to Jesus. And let's do it together. Let's do it together. Makes life different when somebody understands the tear.
And when somebody knows the reason behind the hurt, and when somebody knows the reason behind the pain, let's do it together. Um, so this is that sanctuary season for you. God is sending, he's adding, he's subtracting. He's, yeah, he's sending people in your world to help you do it together in life. This is for you. Pearls, will you please stand? Stop whoever that is in the green and bring that person to me. Yeah. Um, it need be so that you were rejected. It need be so that you were rejected. It need be so that you experienced the power of the thief and the robber. It was purpose of God. But the grace that's on you is not a grace to be the doormat and to just lay under the abuse. Now there's coming a new understanding of your worth, your value, and your ability to make the decision. Don't do it. DC will wait on you. <laughs> Amen. DC will be there. make a mess there was a story receive receive there was a story in the Bible it's a wisdom story it's a wisdom story it's a wisdom story and it's a story where two women come before Solomon it's getting heavy and they come before Solomon I'm going to lay my hands on you this year I'm going to lay my hands on you this year don't get distracted don't run Settle yourself. Your assignment is about to change. I know what's in there. Pastor Trav, did I say it last night? I said, show me her. Settle yourself. There's a story. They come in for Solomon. Thank you for your glory. And they bring a baby. And, and people are lying about where this baby comes from. And they're like, this is my baby. And she's like, well, this is my baby. And Solomon's like, okay, let me kill it. And the one who's like, go ahead. Just kill it. Just, just, just have it. And walk away. And Solomon said, I know this is your child because you were willing to walk away from it. Lift your hands now. You were willing to walk away from it. That's why Washington is going to wait for you. Oh, yeah. Worship the God that makes the nightmare a dream again. I said, worship the God that makes the nightmare a dream again. Okay, so not told ish. Come on, let's worship the God that makes the nightmare a dream. He takes nightmares and he breaks the power of the nightmares and he makes them dreams. Father, we just thank you that you are causing situations and circumstances where you are joining people to do life together. Environments and seasons and storms and struggles. Come on, stir yourself now. I just pray for a new cistern deep within us as we pray. Lord, you broke yokes on Job's life through his friends. Oh, you broke yokes off of Job's life because of who he hung around, because of his support system. The Bible said that when he questioned you, come on, help me pray, push me. When he questioned you and when he lost everything that he had, and the Bible said that at the end of his days, he began to pray for his friends. And when he began to pray for what was around him, you gave him twice as more than what he had. I'm praying for intercessory covenant. I'm praying for bridge relationships you know that these are the days of fresh burdens you loose a new burdens out the out of heaven even into the earth new burdens upon the backs of men new burdens upon your sons and your daughters send the people that's going to help us stand under the burden it's breaking if you let it send the people that will help us manage our pressures under the yoke under the burden under the heavy thing that you're doing it's a heavy 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 ah, heavy, heavy things heavy things yeah 
heavy things, heavy things, oh, heavy things, heavy things, heavy things, heavy things, I'm getting caught up, heavy things, heavy things, yeah, heavy things, heavy things, heavy things, heavy things are coming, heavy things are coming, oh, oh, come on, lift your hands and pray the Holy Ghost. Come on, lift your hands and pray the Holy Ghost. Heavy things. Heavy things. Heavy things. Heavy things. Heavy things. Heavy things. Come on, heavy things. Is there, is there a person in this room that either, yeah, that either received an eviction notice this week or is about to? If you will humble yourself, please run to me. Jalen, pray me in there. Stand at the front of the altar, will you? Kara, jade kiss. Come on, now this is when our nations gets to be all nations. Come on, find that thing back there. Come on, let's go up now. We've been called to do it together. We've been called to do it together. We've been called to do it together. We've been, why is it? We've been called to do it together. Spread out. Spread out. Gasatana keshedada debe hatana gora. All right. Give, give me as many buckets as I can find. Hurry up. Pray in the spirit. Everybody obey me in faith, please. I promised you to let you go, but the Lord told me there will be signs and wonders today. God's moving in an extraordinary way. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Sebre vemha adonantilio nono turdish biku fibi atala noko hora da haro de deo. Oh yeah. The givers. The givers, the God of generosity, is breaking into the earth. You will begin to see God show his hand. He will prosper. He will prosper. Everybody in this room, get whatever amount of cash you can in your hand. Hurry up. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Hurry. Stand in front of who God tells you to sow into. Go ahead, do it now. Run all nations, let's go. Everybody.
Help us to get through it together. Walk into it together. Come out of it together. In the name of Jesus, strengthen, supply, restore, heal, heal, heal. Let this be a life-giving community where healing flows. Uh -huh. Where deliverance flows. Where liberation flows. All right, come on, if you out there, just pray for a minute. Push us in here. Let's do it together. Listen. Pain. Listen. Y'all keep giving and stuff. I want you to watch what's happening up here. Pain. Pain don't feel the same when you have someone to hurt with. Confusion is different when you've got somebody to share your questions with. Let's do it together. And if we can't do it together, even if we're not walking together, we, ha we have the value system. Uh, I want what God wants. You, you have felt forgotten almost as if your most important prayers have gone unanswered. The things that are strongest on your heart before the Lord. And what God is doing now is giving you the opportunity to create a, a different kind of altar. And 
this altar in your life is going to be erected to bring not just provision to pass and not just resource to pass to pass but it's going to bring to pass your map your life map the steps that you need that are getting ready to be ordered your steps your steps are going to be ordered very directly very specifically and very on time even down to this week you will find very extreme wisdom that you run into it will be it will be wisdom like a cloud that you move into and you'll make the right move and God says whatever this change that's coming you will find allies in this new place and the adversaries from the old place will not have more authority over the allies in the new place stretch your hands forth and say so be it Lord, I'm asking for the type of interruption, the type of intervention. I'm asking for the type of ultimate rip and tear in his life. That you would set a series of events in place that would cause him, my God, to see and to know that you're responsible for him in every way. In the name of Jesus. Now there's heartbreak. Lift your hands, man. He, it's just me, you, and God. Ignore these people. There you in the room real quick and you have a liver condition please stand if I go sit down something's going on with your liver you come to the altar Brian, get the mic and sing. coming to deal with asthma and bronchial issues you receive now Fr whatever happened Friday was a uh, that was adrenaline you didn't have an attack okay I was gonna make sure you're, you're you're good for the rest of the day 
the rest of the week. In the name of Jesus, Father, you told me that you was going to deliver the liver today, and I thank you for the right and the power, your healing power in your man's servant. Let it be that he experiences your healing power, your healing report, your healing testimony in the name of Jesus. This fear. You are you. Father, I, I curse the bag. I was taken up and the angel of the Lord showed me. You've had a fear of having to live your life on a bag. The Holy Spirit of God says, not so. Joy, peace. Now, Father, by the authority invested in me, I lose your kingdom to this situation. The kingdom of heaven. Come on, lift your voice and shout now. You are. Your name is Yahweh. Come and keep it. You are. You are. Say you are. You were only six years old. You were only six years old When you called me When you saw me When you found me When you reached for me I remember you Yes, I do I remember you I remember you You used to sing to me You used to dance with me You used to make time for me Then they hurt you They really hurt you The church they hurt you they accused you and then you left me you walked away from me you ignored me you were mad at me then I found you and I grabbed you and then I held you then I grabbed you I saw that knife I saw the knife when your enemies told you to die Mustered up the strength, but then you screamed out why I stopped you from taking your own life. I stopped you from cutting your wrist with a knife, and now I'm raising you. I'm saving you. I'm healing you.
sing to you cause I'm in love with you what can I do for you what can I sing to you what can I bring to you I'm in love with you a little longer stay a little longer Stay a little longer. I'm in love with you. A little longer. A little longer. A little longer. I'm in love with you. 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 What can I do for you? What can I do for you? What can I bring to you? What can I bring to you? What can I sing to you? What can I sing to you? I'm in love with you. What can I do for you? What can I do for you? What can I sing to you? What can I sing to you? What can I bring to you? What can I bring to you? I'm in love. I will do anything. I will do anything. Let's stand up. I feel God's glory. If you're here. I will do anything. 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 I love with you. I will do anything. 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 I'm in love with you. I will do anything. I will do anything. I will do anything. I will do anything. I'm in love with you. Forgive the time if you're here and you've never accepted the Lord as your personal Savior. Um, you want to be water baptized. Thank you, Father. You want to be uh, baptized in the name of Jesus and you want to recommit your life to the Lord. Maybe you're uh, in something or an entanglement, a snare, a bondage of sorts. And you want to be able to move out of that life into another one. Jesus is here. And guess what? He's in love with you. You're here. And you want to come and join this church. Or maybe you are saved. And you do know the Lord and the pardon of your sins. And uh, you just want to be a part of a teaching. And uh, you want to be a part of this, this, this level, this way of life. Come, leave your seat now. Come to the altar. If you want to join this church or get saved, come to this altar. Run, 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 run. I'm in love. Come on, everybody.
everybody, all over the place, all over the place. Hey, they ain't big enough, come on. They're still coming, come on. All over the room, you can come. Hey, I know you out there. You feel that. Stop playing hard to get. Will you just pull your neighbor and tell him, hurry up. Go up there. Come on. I'm in love with you. It doesn't matter who you are or what you've done or where you've come from. There's a chance for you now. Come now. I'm in love with you. Thank you. Come on. What can I bring to you? What can I do for you? What can I say to you? I'm in love with you. How can I make you smile? How can I make you smile? How can I make you smile? I'm in How can I make you smile? How can I make you smile? Keep coming. How can I make you smile? I'm in I'm desperate. I'm desperate. I'm desperate. I'm in I'm desperate. I'm desperate. I'm desperate. I'm desperate. I'm desperate. Keep it there. We have one, two, three, four, five, six. What are the seven? I'm in love. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Everything is passed away. Everything becomes new. The Lord wants you to know, remember not the former. Neither consider the things of old. And it's hard to forget the past when your past is on paper. But remember not the former. God's going to separate you and liberate you. It will be wonderful. A man could not have done this. And the attorney and the support that disappointed you. The Holy Ghost said to tell you he is your vindicator. Come on. Let's give it up for our new family members. Come welcome to me and everybody. Let's love on them. Where are they going? Oh, this is Elder Stephen Wingard. He's very wealthy. He's going to take you to our new members area and pay all of your bills. Come on, everybody, go. Come on, say, I need you. I really need you. I need you. I'm in love with you. I love you. Really?
in the red hoodie. In the red hoodie. Um, I love you. I love you. trying to figure out if anybody was going to show up to be there with you. And even as recent as last night, you came to a breaking point of weakness. I don't want to do this. I don't know if I have this in me. But God is pulling you to fasting and prayer. There is a sister to prayer, a seek that's trying to be born in you, which is why you're here. Now commit. The enemy you see today, you won't see no more. They'll flee. Throw yourself into the presence of the Lord. It's been a long time. It's been a long time since you've been with me. It's been a long time. Last thing I hear, I'm not them, I'm still him. I'll be good to you. I'm in love with you. I'm not them, I'm still him. Just a pink slip. It's just a pink slip. But I love you. They let me fire you. They probably lied on you. But I've got you. Cause I'm in love with you. Try again, and you will win without fail because I'm in love with you. Be ready by Wednesday. This is about to turn around. Now, I know I'm freaking you out because you're like, that is crazy. By Wednesday, the whole thing will be different. And what you were crying about Thursday, you'll laugh about Wednesday. God's turning it around. Congratulations. I'm proud of you. Come on. Everybody shout hallelujah. I'm in love with you. We've been dismissed. Father, in the name of Jesus, 
I thank you for what you're doing and I thank you for what you're saying. I thank you for this moment in time. I heard the Lord say, yeah, I got to get the word of the Lord out soon because I'm bubbling. This will be a season for all nation Chicago specifically of canceled surgeries. Seems random, but I feel like the Holy Ghost said he was rebuking the scalpel and that there was going to be such a powerful move of healing in this place that people were going to have the Zoe kind of life. Real quick, everybody that got a pending procedure that they're afraid of, start shouting like you're crazy. Just reach in your voice and holler. Just do that real quick. Come on, holler. 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 You. Come on, holler. I'm trying to move, but cancel surgeries. I don't know what's happening. Cancel them. 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 I feel I'm moving in healing. This is weird. Cancel these surgeries now. Cancel them surgeries now. Cancel them. I said cancel. I said cancel. You know, I was trying to get out of here, but I see cancel surgeries. Scalpels are going to hell. I'm telling you right now. Wow! Transplants. Transplants. I see kidneys, livers, lungs, organs. Something's happening. Something's happening. Something's happening. I see. Oh, I see new organs. Uh oh. We have to go. Let's do it. Scream in the name of Jesus. Be healed. Be delivered. Be set free. Say be healed. Come on. Say be delivered. Say be set free. I was trying to dismiss.
keep us from falling and to prevent us faultless before the Lord with exceeding great joy. To Him be our blessings, honor, dominion, and power.